Okay, so we are inside of Unreal Engine 5, and as you can see, I have a MetaHuman with some custom clothing. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do in this tutorial, even custom shoes. So custom mask. And if I play it on the sequencer, you will see that the animation is, is running well. I mean, one of the things about this is that it is not attached to the skeleton. This is a cloth simulation that I actually got done inside of Marvelous Designer. And this video is for all my digital fashion people, 3D artists that are using something like uh, Dash Studio 3D models to get their renders done. From what I know, you will bring one of those models into Marvelous, Clothe 3D, and then simulate your garment so it has this kind of movement. But as you can see, I don't have an avatar because actually to have avatars, render i would prefer them to be super realistic and that studio does have some really good models but i wanted to use metahumans and i have finally come up with this workflow so that's what i'm going to share with you guys today i do not recommend to use this method for games because we are baking the cloud simulation as an alembic and it, it, it can get pretty heavy so if you want to use this for the digital fashion renders totally go for it we're going to uh, talk about the shoes and the mask on a later video so we can just focus on the clothing because we do have to take a lot of steps to get to this point. And before we start, let me just tell you the softwares that I will be using just so you don't get invested in the video and you don't see that the software that you are using is compatible with this workflow. I do recommend that you watch it so you kind of understand and see what I'm doing and maybe you can recreate it or do something better than what I did and then you can show everybody else how to do it. I'm going to be using MetaHuman Creator, obviously, Unreal Engine 5, but this should also work for Unreal Engine 4.27. I'm going to be using Cinema 4D, but there is one step that you can do it with Blender. Clothing simulation can be done in Marvelous Designer or Clothe 3D. I know there's also Browseware and Houdini. And lastly, I'm going to be using Quixel Mixer and then Quixel Bridge. So now that you know what I use and you are still interested in learning, let's just get started. Okay, so first step is obviously to go to metahuman.unrealengine.com, create and customize your metahuman's features, the skin, the hair, the makeup, all of that. But for this method, it is required that you do not select any tops or any bottoms. This is because we actually need the mesh itself of the body. And just to take a look, let me select the sweater. And if we take a look, the metahuman clothing that you get from the creator itself, whenever you select one of those and you export it to Unreal, it is actually deleting the whole like torso mesh of your characters. And this is actually the most efficient way to dress up a character that's going to be inside of a video game. Remember that Unreal Engine is a game engine and having cloud simulation to run in real time I don't think it's going to be a great idea. So what they're doing in here, it is actually, they're binding the clothing, the mesh of the clothing, because this is not a clothing simulation. This is just the garment being binded to the bones. And as you can see, we can get the stretching happening in certain areas. It doesn't look bad. As you can see, it moves with the bones of the body. So again, this is very efficient for games, but if you want to create your own custom clothing and you want to be able to customize the cloth simulation as well, you're going to have to get your metahuman without any garments. Also, if you want custom shoes, I recommend that you do the sandals. There is no option to have without shoes, but I will show you how to disable them inside of Unreal Engine. The next step is to animate our metahuman inside of Unreal Engine and then export this animation to Marvelous Designer. And in this sequence, I actually have my metahuman get the animation from a Maximo animation. And I did this through something called retargeting. So I am basically retargeting the bones from the metahuman to the Maximo so I can have my metahuman animated. This process actually requires a whole lot of things. So I'm going to leave that tutorial for the next one. And for this example, I'm going to show you how you can animate everything inside of Unreal Engine. To bring our metahuman from the metahuman creator inside of Unreal Engine, we're going to be using the bridge app. And inside of Unreal Engine 5, it is actually built inside of the engine. I simply go into content and then Quixel bridge. All you have to do is sign into the same account you use for the metahuman creator. And under metahumans, my metahumans, you should be able to see your model so if i click on this there's going to be a process for example let's go to this one where you're going to have to first download the model and here you can change the quality but i just recommend to do the highest if you can it will take a while but once it is ready you can just click on add 
When you go back to Unreal Engine, you will see a lot of messages to just enable everything that is missing. And then if you have to restart, then just restart it. And then when you go to your content drawer, you should be able to go to the MetaHuman folder and under the name, you should be able to see the blueprint. In my case, I have it over here because again, I bound it to the Mixamo animation. And all you have to do is drag it into the scene. Okay, so to animate our MetaHuman using only the Unreal Engine rig, let's go into Cinematics and let's add a new level sequence. And from the World Outliner, let me select my MetaHuman and I just want to drag it here into the sequencer. You should be able to see the control rig of the face, which is this one right here. But if you click on MetaHuman control rig under the body, you will see that you have this rig. So from here, I'm just going to add a keyframe to the first frame, go to something like 30. And then if I select one of these controls and, you know, rotate and animate my MetaHuman, you see that this is going to be animated. And with this, you're going to have full control of the type of animation that you want for your character. Again, you can post this any way you want, and we're going to be exporting this to simulate our clothing. The only important thing is that you start this animation as an A pose. And to export this animation, let me first cap my timeline to 60. I'm going to press the key O and then the close bracket just to tell it where my timeline is going to end. Go to the body, right click, and then bake animation sequence. Save it in the folder that you wanted. Let's just go to content and I'm going to do tutorial. I'm just going to leave everything by default, export the transforms and the curves and click on export to animation. This is going to bake and you will see that assets are created. You can open that up and this will give you the animation of the body. But as you can see, we don't have the face. And in order to see the bones, just go to the character tab, go to bones and then show all the hierarchy. And from here, make sure that it is selected on the here and the asset browser. Let's go to export assets and export the preview mesh. Okay, so we are ready to go to our next step, which is joining the body mesh, the animation of the body with the upper torso, the neck and the head. These two come separate because of a lot of reasons and hopefully there's an easier way to join them together or to like export everything. I know this is possible to export everything to Maya and then do the rest of it animation in there. But I'm going to show you how to attach both of them and have the animation inside of Cinema 4D. To export the face mesh, just click on the face and in the details tab, just scroll down where it says skeletal mesh and click on this to browse. Find it in the folders and then right click asset actions and export. And this is going to give us an FBX of the mesh with all of the bones, just like the body animation that we exported from over here. Okay, so I got my body and my face. And for this one, I actually have an animation for the body. Like I told you, you can target them to mix some animations again for a different tutorial, but this should be the same process whenever you export your animation that you did inside of Unreal Engine. And if I put them side to side, you can see that the face and the body have similar bones. So all we have to do really is just parent the bones from the body to the bones of the face. Go to the face mesh and then middle mouse button on the root. This is going to select all of the bones, all of the children inside of this root. Go to the basic tag and then for the icon settings, let's select an icon color for custom. This is just to not get lost with the bones from the body itself because the names are the same. And I mean, yeah, you can rename everything, but it's going to take some time. Let's just change the color to know which is which. Okay, now make sure that you are in frame zero. I've actually tried doing this parent thing for like from a different post to see how it all comes together but it just doesn't work on my side on my test it it they just didn't work like that so just make sure that you are in frame zero you don't have to select all of the bones so let me just click away and now it's just a matter of dragging the root from the mesh under the root to the body that is everything i'm going to be doing just dragging the bones from one to the other and also we have to go to the object tab and change the bone to from parent. And then make sure that the length is zero. Let's do a couple more together just so you can see what the process is like. Pelvis, make it a child, go to object, 
bone change the child to from parent and here you can see that the link is not zero so i'm just going to set it to zero it is going to move my face but it's because it's adapting to the body i'll open up my pelvis spine one under spine one from the bone change the bone to from parent make that zero same thing for spine number two spine number three And I think it's with spine number four that it actually goes back to its place. So let's do this. And there you go. Let's go to spine number five. And I'm just going to continue to do this with all of the bones. It is going to be a lot of work, but right now that's the only way that you can parent them like that. If you know an easier way, just let us know down in the comments or create your own tutorial. Just so this process is a bit easier for everyone. I'm going to continue doing this. I'm not going to speed it up just so you can see that you really have to make sure that every single bone is parented. I open up spine number five and then it's going to be a lot of individual bones that I have to parent. So let's just get going. I'm going to start with neck one. So just drag that underneath. Neck one has neck two. Do not worry about the facial neck root. Neck two has the head. And the head has another facial root, so we don't need that. I'm going to close those up for neck number one. And then I just like to have something to mark that I have finished that bone. So I'm going to press Control Alt and then click over here. This is to set the visibility of your objects in the scene. But I just want like some kind of tag just so I know what I'm working with. That one is done. Let's move into clavicle L, clavicle left. Drag that from the mesh. Let's do the same thing. Bone from parent. Open that up. Upper arm left. And just continue doing that. It is definitely a tedious step. And you do have to make sure that everything is parented. But it has to be done. So let's just keep going. Open up my upper arm corrective root. And then just parent upper arm back left. Parent, forward, L. Sometimes it does this. Like I open up the menu and you see that it closes. I don't know why Cinema is doing that. But I just have to deal with it. Upper arm, inside, left. Go from parent. And then upper arm, out, left. There we go. That was the upper arm corrective root. Let's close that up. That was the upper arm. Clavicle out left, clavicle out left. And then clavicle scap. And that should be the clavicle left. Let's mark it down. Okay, clavicle right. Parent, upper arm, upper arm, corrective root, Okay, upper arm corrective root is done. We have the clavicle out right. Clavicle scap right. Okay, clavicle right, let's mark that down. And then these last four should be easier. It's just clavicle pectoral right. Latissimus left, Latissimus right, 
and then pectoral left. And we can check that we did everything right just by playing the animation. And as you can see, everything is binded together like it is supposed to be. It was very tedious to get all of those bones together, but it is kind of satisfying to see this just binded together. We are ready for the next step, and that is exporting this animation as an Alembic. First of all, because I was told that animations, Alembic animations, work a bit better when you simulate inside of Marvelous Designer, and also because you can really export this as an FBX. I haven't found that way, so we're going to do it as an Alembic. I grab my body mesh with its bones, put them into a group, and just name that body. The face mesh already comes in our group, so just leave that as is. And then I want to grab both of these and put those inside of group. And then just call this metric human or something. Now middle mouse button to select everything. File, export, and export this as an Alembic. Make sure that you select all of the frames of the animation. In my case, it's 688. You don't need polygon selections, UVs. Do select merge generated. And this is the only thing in my scene, so I don't need to click on selection only. Click on OK and export that out. Okay, so far so good. We have our animation. Let's bring it into Marvelous Designer or Clothe 3D by going to File, Import, and then import that Alembic that you have created. It is showing on my side as the face mesh and the body, but as you can see, they are connected and we do have that simulation running. And for this step, you should know what to do. Just design the clothing for your avatar. Something to consider is that according to your particle distance of your garments, the lower the number, the more high quality meshes you're going to have. Therefore, when you export this as an Alembic, the size is going to depend on how high quality your mesh is. I've had some files that they are like almost 50 gigabytes. It is going to look nice, but if you cannot afford to have 50 gigabytes just for an Alembic animation, then you might want to play with the particle distance. A number 10 for me works pretty standard. Like I get some pretty good results, but like for best results, do something, I don't know, something like five. Okay. Now the important thing for here is to select your avatar and make sure you have to make sure that the skin offset is set to 12. Going back to Unreal Engine, here I have the same outfit with a skin offset of 3. This is the default skin offset, and as you can see, part of the geometry from the metahuman is being exposed under that garment. And it doesn't matter how much it looks that it is right, it might not look right from the other side, and if you play the animation, you will see that it is going to stick outside of some parts. You can test this for yourself and play with different skin offsets, but to save you some time, I will go for something like 12 or even 10. The only problem with this is that in close-up renders, you are going to be able to see the gap. And that is probably one of the biggest caveats of this method, to have that gap between the avatar and the clothing. But in my case, it's worth it because I can bring the cloth simulation that I created in Marvelous. And I just think that the cloth looks better than to simulate inside of Unreal Engine. So again, change the skin offset from 10 to 12. And I also recommend to change the kinetic friction to something like 0.8. This is just to make sure that the garment doesn't move too much and it sticks well to the avatar. In this example, I simulated this with the fitting accurate fabric. It is the highest setting for class simulation. And if you can afford it, just go ahead and do this because it's going to give you the best results. But if you think normal simulation looks pretty well to you, then just use that. Okay, so you have the avatar, you have the clothing fit into the avatar, you have simulated everything, and now it's time to export this. The first thing we have to do is to make sure that all of our UVs are inside of the serial one, this first box in the UV editor. For this method, there is no uting support for the Alembic. And even though you can texture everything inside of Marvelous or Clo, having such packed UVs are not gonna be a problem because the textures that I'm gonna be using are gonna come from Quixel Mixer or from Quixel Bridge Library. But if you are gonna use textures that you made inside of Marvelous, then just make sure to utilize this space as much as you can. Okay, so now to export, let's grab an OBJ from this file export OBA selected. I'm going to name this one selection and I will tell you why once we move into Cinema 4D and then save it. 
and then for the cloth simulation go to file with everything selected go to file export and then export this as an alembic ogawa i'm gonna call this one simmed or simulated make sure to weld it and export it as thin it is not going to work with thick and i'm going to show you why in a second and sometimes when you export and it, you don't see the uv maps just like select one of the maps and then deselect it that that might just be a glitch that is only happening to me leave everything as default there should be entire region and then click on ok Inside of Cinema 4D, I have my Alembic animation and I have the OBJ selection that we exported. And the reason we have this is because we're going to transfer the textures and the UV map to the Alembic because the Alembic is usually don't carry information in this method. So all I have to do is select the Alembic animation, press the letter C, that's going to make that editable, and then click on the selection tag and then all the way to the UV tag, drag it down, hold control. And that's going to copy everything into the Alembic. Okay, so here I have exported a thick Alembic. And as you can see, there is a bit of thickness, but there's definitely some thickness in there in contrast to this other one. This was exported as thin. And for some reason, transferring the textures this way just do not work on the thick version. I made that Alembic editable and let me do the same thing. Just transfer all of the selection tags and the texture to it. And then you're going to see that it is just not going to work. If we compare the selection tags from the thin one, you can see that it is selecting pretty much every layer that we have here inside of Marvelous Designer. Like, let's look at the jacket. Now, if I look at the same selection tag, and compare it to the con to the thick one you can see that th the pants are being selected and it is also really messed up so this method is definitely not going to work if you have thick garments you can definitely add thickness to this if you select the garment and then you create a clot surface you can add thickness right here let's do something like 0.1 and you will see that now we have the thickness back. But also be really careful because this is just going to add way more geometry to the garment. It might not seem like it. But from my test, the size can increase to times two and even times three. So I usually just don't add any thickness. Once this is done, we're ready for the next step. So you can select your garment, file, and export that as an Alembic. Set the length of your animation, and then I think that we need polygon selection and the UVs. We don't need to merge generator. You only need to do this if you're planning to add the thickness of the clot. But again, I don't need to multiply the size of this because it's already going to be huge. So I'll just leave that without any thickness. Okay, we're back into Unreal Engine for the final step. Let's add the simulated garment to our MetaHuman. Let's import that Alembic. Make sure that you go to Edit plugins search up alembic and make sure that you have the alembic in porter it is experimental but a lot of things are experimental including unreal engine 5 so once we import that alembic you will see this window now these are the settings that you need we need to import this as geometry experimental cached you shouldn't have to set anything on the sampling this should display the total amount of frames that you exported and a very important setting on this is to make sure that the compressed texture coordinates it's all the way up to 16. If you do something like 10, your textures are not going to look correctly. So make sure that this is all the way to 16. If you're afraid of compression, then you can just set this higher, something like 20. Let's go all the way down. And I will definitely import this as Autodesk 3ds Max. Again, this is what has worked for me, but you can try other settings and see if it works better for you. But I'm just going to click on import. It is going to take some time depending on the size of your Olympic. But once you have it in, simply drag it to the scene. I'm going to select my MetaHuman, copy its location, and then just paste it on the garment. For my example, I have to rotate it 90 degrees. And I just have to make sure, you see right here, you just going to make sure that it is place correctly double check that everything is fine and in order to have this animated on the render i have to select the garment bring it into the sequencer and then i have to add a track that is called geometry cached make sure that it starts at zero and as you can see it is going to follow our avatar I want to use some of the fabric textures inside of the Quixel Bridge library. So all I have to do is select them. This one I already have it downloaded, so it's just a matter of clicking on add. And if I go to my content drawer, you're going to see that it automatically imports that material. That's going to be inside of the Mega Scans folder. 
surfaces, and then you're going to have the material and all of its textures. So from here, I can just simply drag it, or you can click on the material and then just click on this left arrow that says use. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Again, this is on Real Engine 5. It might just be a glitch, so I'm just going to drag all of them. But you can also bring that selection OBJ that we created for the material transfer to the Alembic inside of something like Quixel Mixer. And for this step, I do recommend that whenever you're doing the Marvelous Designer layers for the fabric, that you name everything properly so you don't have any troubles whenever you texture this because it might get confusing to know which part goes to where. You can then export all of the textures created, select the quality, click on export to disk. And if you have this problem that you cannot see the back face of the garment, I'm gonna show you how to fix that in Unreal Engine. Okay, so in order to fix that back face not being visible, go to your material and make sure that when you select a material component, that two-sided is selected and then you save. And then you're gonna be able to see the back face of your garment. And there you have it. Our MetaHuman now has custom clothing and you can use this for any type of renders that you want. Again, it is not recommended for video games because of the Alembics can get pretty heavy. And if you want to learn how to attach, for example, this mask, and I also have the shoes, just stay tuned. I will release a tutorial for how to do that. It shouldn't be as long as this one, but I do want to leave it as a separate tutorial just because there was a lot that we covered on this one. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments, or if you know how you can actually do this. I really like Unreal Engine because it is free. So if you know a way to do this whole thing with free softwares or something like Blender, I know you can do the cloud simulation inside of Blender as well. Then please let us know down in the comments. Feel free to just post your video if you create a tutorial specific for just Blender. Because I actually tried it myself and I couldn't transfer the materials. I had a lot of problems transferring the materials to the Alembic. That's why I use cinema 4d and that's how i came up with this specific workflow that's everything for me and i'll see you in the next video